Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out. This is the second part of the Agogo series, Novelty Agogo. My name is Pat S.B. Fitzgerald. I'm also known in some small circles on Long Island as Captain Platt. I'm also a song parodist. I want to start out by saying it's kind of a fact that novelty music is widely considered to be the lowest form of musical entertainment. It is always the smallest section in the record stores, stuck somewhere between comedy and children's to show that it's not to be taken seriously or that it's considered childish, usually by people who think that it's too cool to laugh. Novelty music also often pigeonholes many artists. They'll come out with one novelty hit, even if they have a large repertoire of great songs, but people will hear the one novelty hit and one of two things will happen. They will either, that's the only song that they'll request from them, say that's the only one we want, that's the only one we want to hear. Or it'll have the opposite effect saying, we know the one song, we can't stand it, we don't care what else they've recorded. I'll take, for example, Elmo and Patsy, who might have wonderful songs, a great, great background of music, yet after the holidays and you hear Grandma got run over like reindeer for the millionth time, do you really care what else they've recorded? Another artist that falls under this category is Barnes and Barnes. Barnes and Barnes were Bill Mooney, the little kid from Lost in Space, and his childhood friend Robert Hamer. They would make eight millimeter films as well as music videos and songs. Their biggest hit song was a song called Fish Heads. For those of you who don't know Fish Heads, consider yourselves lucky. For those of you who do know the song Fish Heads, don't worry, you won't be hearing it this evening. At least not their version and not in its entirety. To talk about novelty music, I have to talk really about myself. I grew up extremely silly on uh, Long Island. I listened to my parents' radio station, which was WHLI. If you remember that, they played the, 50, the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So I'd hear a lot of Glenn Miller as a child and a lot of Bing Crosby and a little Frank Sinatra. It would all become the background of my childhood. Didn't make much of an impression on me. But then, they heard, then I heard Spike Jones, and suddenly I had my full attention. As a child, anything that made me laugh made me feel good, and I embraced. Funny songs, we'll take somebody, for example, like Spike Jones, who I just mentioned. Spike Jones, I ran out. I bought this record. It's been when I heard Spike Jones as a kid, I went out and begged my parents to buy the record for me. Always thought his songs were funny. However, many years later, I would actually see a clip of his performing one of these songs live on his television show, and it opened up a whole other dimension for me. I realized that not only is he funny, and I'm afraid a lot of people, when they hear novelty songs, think of that. They're just kind of these throwaway songs, but. There are very, very talented musicians behind them. And Spike Jones is no exception. Lindsey Armstrong Jones, Spike Jones, assembled an orchestra that not only could, you know, be funny, but they were very extremely talented musicians. In order to both Spike Jones and Weird Al Yankovic later, both had the same philosophy. In order to do a parody of a song, you have to be able to play it backwards and forwards. Weird Al took it one step further, but we'll get to Weird Al. Spike Jones also had a no drinking rule when it came to his band. And it's very obvious when you see the clip, they were a very tight group and very, very talented musicians. Spike himself could conduct an orchestra, perform the percussion, and chew gum at the same time. It's an amazing feat, and you will see it. One of his band members, Freddie Morgan, the banjo player, funniest guy in the band. Yet when he sits down and he plays the banjo, it is an amazing thing to see. Most of these novelty artists were not only talented musicians, but they were extremely, extremely smart men, showing that comedy really is a thinking man's medium. Tom Lehrer, for example, was a brilliant mathematician. A lot of his novelty songs that he composed came from wanting to teach his students a little further and to entertain them at the same time. Weird Al Yankovic was the class valedictorian, 
And he has a degree in architecture. See, a song can have great lyrics and great music. You can take any song. But writing a song that is tuneful, funny, and rhymes really, really is an art form. Again, you will see some more of that in the presentation. When I said that Weird Al took that concept of having to play a song backwards and forwards in order to do a proper parody of it, he did take it one step further. He assembled a band that could not only parody, play the songs, but they don't even have to be the specific songs. He has the band that they can emulate the sound where you would know within a certain type of the way they arrange the piece, the way the, the, way the songs actually, the notes actually sound. And you'll know immediately, oh, that's, that's supposed to be the Talking Heads. And it might not be a specific song, but you'll be oh, that's Devo. I know who that is. But it doesn't have to be a specific song. That is how far Weird Al has progressed this whole concept. Novelty music, in my case, a lot of people don't, it might have happened with a lot of people as well, I'm not sure, but it becomes a doorway to more legitimate music. What I mean by this is, do I like the Beatles, for example? Yes, of course I like the Beatles, but I probably never would have listened to them if it wasn't for the Monkees. I saw the Monkees on television in the early 70s, and my mom would, seeing that I liked it, would run out to the flea market and buy the records for me. Now, the music wasn't particularly funny, but I would associate it with the TV show, and that made it funny. And then it made me seek out Hard Day's Night and Help, and I thought they were funny, and so that kind of got me into the Beatles. But <laughs> imagine my surprise when I found out the Beatles weren't particularly funny in their music. Now, the biggest thing for me that brought me into music, again, with the doorway into more legitimate music, was MTV. MTV in a small way. What MTV was supposed to do was it was supposed to play a video for you. You would sit there and watch it and hear the band and run out and buy the record. That didn't quite work with me with MTV. But when Weird Al hit the airwaves in 1984 and they let him do Al TV, it worked. He played, and you will see an example. You're not going to see four hours of the Weird Al Al TV that he did, but you'll see it all in five minutes. You'll see a piece of each of these videos, but you'll see a lot of these groups, they're not considered novelty bands, but their videos would be extremely silly, and it would work on me. I went out and bought a Two Record Sticks live album. I don't like sticks, <laughs> but I like the one really goofy song, the Weird Al play that they did. So yes, Al TV served as a doorway for me into other music where I ran out to the record stores and I bought records like Tony Basil and Styx and Jay Giles Band. Not novelty music per se, but stuff that was, the videos were funny and I associated that with the music. After Weird Al won a Grammy, a lot of stand-up comedians tried to emulate this. They already had records and they were known, but they weren't getting the Grammys that Al was getting. He had gotten it for the song Eat It. So, Rodney Dangerfield had released Rap and Rodney. And he did, in fact, win a Grammy for that. Even though it's just one song on another stand-up album of his, but he did win the Grammy. Billy Crystal also did this with his You Look at Marvelous song. Now, before we continue, there's a lot of stuff we have to get through, so forgive me if I'm rushing through this, but we don't have much time and I don't want us to be locked in the library. You will see some cross genres. Novelty music is such a wide field that there are cross genres. You will see, for example, people like the Fat Boys. That's novelty rap. You will see people like the Dickies, who are a legitimate punk band, but they're novelty punk, because every single song of theirs is a humorous song or a humorous cover. You will see people, novelty folk. You'll hear people like Christine Lavin, and Larry Gross, who did Junk Food Junkie back in 1976. That's novelty folk. Also, I want to apologize for the quality of the video, but for a lot of the stuff that I researched and I still, I acquired <laughs> from YouTube and other sources, some of the quality is a little iffy, but I felt it was important to be represented. Probably the worst case would be the Alan Sherman one. Won't look the greatest, but it's a worthwhile see, as he tries to do a song parody with Herman's Hermits. It's a very interesting clip. 
You will see excerpts from my interview with Weird Al that I did in 1999. You will hear, it's an audio, you know, with some pictures behind it, but you'll hear, I was able to ask him a lot of questions, which also shows that you don't have to be a pretentious jerk to be a rock star. Weird Al was the nicest person I could ever meet. And I was able to ask him any questions I wanted to on a one-to-one -one thing. There were no press agents, there was no security people. Truth be known, I could have knifed Weird Al, nobody would have known. <laughs> but like I said, nicest, nicest guy in the world. And he answered my questions. A lot of novelty music you would not have heard if it wasn't for one man, Dr. Demento, who with his radio show would play all novelty songs. Anything that he thought was funny, whether it was considered novelty or not, was on his show. So, to conclude, Frank Zappa had once asked, does humor belong in music? In my opinion, yes, it completely does. And I hope you enjoy the presentation. And if I left anybody out, who knows, maybe they'll have me come back in and do a part two of this series, okay? So everybody, enjoy the video. Thank you very much.